Okay, so in class you've seen what the waggle dance looks like. The bee waggles its abdomen for a while while it walks straight in a direction, and then it's going to turn right without waggling, then waggle again, turn left, not waggling, waggle again, turn right, waggle again, turn left. So this figure eight pattern here with the waggle down the center portion is called the waggle dance. And we identified that there are several different aspects of this dance that could carry information. Perhaps the length of the waggle run itself, maybe the intensity of the waggles, the orientation, the direction of the waggles. Is it waggling this way or in a different direction, orientation? Um, how uh, long does the, the bee dance for, the speed of the dance? Uh, so there are many aspects of the waggle dance that could theoretically carry information about where food is located. And so that raises the puzzle. How do we decipher the waggle dance? Um, again, down here we have some characteristics of the dance. And we, what we want to do is figure out which of these characteristics is somehow carrying information about the distance and direction to food nearby the hive. One clever approach to figure out what the dance means or which aspects of the dance carry information about food is to uh, set up a situation like you see in the picture. You have a field, you have a food source that the bees like, you have the hive here, and you have a way to look in and monitor the dances that are being made in the hive. And so you let some workers go out to the food and let uh, those bees go back and presumably communicate. And then, of course, other bees will uh, relocate the food. And then what you do is you change the location of the food in a systematic way. So maybe you'll uh, move the food uh, over to this location, same distance, but it's now at a, in a different direction from the hive. And then as you move the food and you let bees visit and go back and dance, what you want to do is then compare what part of the dance has changed. So the original dances indicated the food was at this location. Then you systematically move the food to another location, changing only the direction, not the distance here, and see which part of the dance changes. You could move it over here, again, changing only the direction, not the distance. Alternatively, you could uh, uh, keep the uh, direction the same and change the distance of the food. And always what you're doing is you're comparing the new dance to the previous dance. So you want to see how the dance changes as you systematically change the location of the food. When researchers systematically changed the position of food while watching how the dance changed, what they found was, in fact, the orientation of the waggle part seemed to change as the direction of the food changed. So as the food was changing in direction, the orientation, this waggle part, would begin to change its orientation. And furthermore, the length of the waggle run would change as the distance to the food changed. So this was one strategy then for how to figure out what the, the uh, dance meant the, to decipher the language of the waggle dance was to systematically change the food and watch how the what, what parts of the dance would change. For example, we see down in this graph distance to the food source. So as you move the food different distances uh, from the hive, you see the duration of the waggle run the duration of the waggle run, that part when it's waggling, is increasing. As the food is moved farther from the hive, the duration of the run is increasing.